Quilted placemats are amazing. They're a wonderful way to add a little bit of pop of color to your dining room. They're something that you can make yourself and they can match your own home decor because you get to select the fabrics that you want to have. Personally, I like the way quilted placemats look and feel better than the plasticky ones at the dollar store or Walmart. And so I have been known to make my own placemats for my table, but there's a problem with that. When I make those placemats, there's nothing protecting the fabric from food or drink. And sometimes somebody makes a little bit of a mess and it can be a headache to clean up. Hey friends, welcome back to my sewing room. In today's video, we are going to fix that problem. I wanted to make another set of placemats for my table. I've done these in the past and I really like doing them, but I wanted them to be childproof, if you will or maybe adult proof because I've been known to make a mess sometimes. <laughs> I wanted the surface of my placemat to be something that I could wipe clean. I have a bit of vinyl fuse from Pellon on my shelves that I could totally use this with. And in my head, what I thought I would do is make a quilted placemat. And then when it was all done, put some of that vinyl on top and fuse it onto the top of the quilted placemat. Seems like it would work, right? Well, Tracy over at Splash Fabric had a better idea. When I shared with her what I was thinking about doing, she was like, no, 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 no. You need to use my laminated fabric. Now, apparently this laminated cotton is not a new thing. It's a already circulated <laughs> in the industry. I know So Yaz already had it on their channel and they've even sold some of this, but I had never heard of it until she told me about her product. When I mentioned I was going to put that Pellon on top of a quilted placemat, she was like, you don't want to do that because it's not going to stay on the fabric. It's not going to hold up as well as the fabric that we have laminated in house in Seattle. And I got to tell you, I made a little slip cover out of some Star Wars fabric with that vinyl stuff fused to the top of it to go over my husband's kettlebell that we keep on the back deck. And it's only been out there for a few months and it's already looking a little worse for wear. So I figured she was probably right on that. We had a bit of a discussion and she agreed to send some of her luscious laminated fabric to me in exchange for my honest review and maybe a tutorial of something that we can make with her fabric. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this two-sided placemat using her fabric, but we're also going to put it to a test. I want to know, can I iron this? And can I sew it with my own needle? And how does it feel and look when it's all put together? So we're going to dive into all those tests in the tutorial, and I can't wait to share with you what I found. So here's the close up of the fabric that I picked from Splash Fabric. I've got two different sets of fabrics laid out here. This set is what I'm going to use for my placemats. And this set is what I'm going to use to make some sort of a cosmetic or toiletry bag. The reason why I want to use this laminated cotton for both of those projects is because the fabric, first of all, feels great. It doesn't feel stiff and thick like your traditional quilting cotton would if you added the vinyl or the laminated to it with your iron. Secondly, this laminated treatment that they put on the fabric doesn't seem to lift off of the cotton as easily as that stuff that you would fuse on with your iron. So I think this is going to last longer. The laminated surface on this fabric is going to allow me just to wipe it clean. And I think that's going to be a bonus for table mats and a cosmetic bag because we tend to spill things on each of those. And it would be really nice to have just kind of a wipe clean surface. I'm going to set this aside. We'll work on that toiletry bag some other time. And I'm going to dive into the placemats. So the first thing that we need to talk about before we cut our fabric is what size placemats are we going to make? From the research that I've done, there are typically two different sizes that you use for placemats, either 12 by 18, which seems to be the standard, or 12 by 16 if you have a little bit less space on your table and you need your placemats to be a little less wide. Either one of those will work, but also really it doesn't matter. You don't have to have exact measurements for your placemats. 
you can just figure out the space that you need to fill in and come up with your own size. For example, my Christmas table has round placemats. That's obviously not rectangular in shape. If you have a square top table, maybe you would want to put some square placemats down. As long as you have something that will cover the surface area where your utensils and your plates or bowls will sit, you'll be totally fine. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do just the 12 by 16. I kind of like the shape of that. So we've got to cut our fabric. Before we do, I need to think about how big my placements are going to be and add in my seam allowance. I'm going to sew all of this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So that means if I want my finished size to be 16 by 12, then I need to add a half inch to my cutting for both measurements so that I have enough for the seam allowance. So I'm going to cut 16 and a half by 12 and a half for the backing fabric as well as the front main fabric. I'm going to cut my fabric, but before I do, I want to let you know that the width of this fabric actually is not 40 or 42 or 44 inches like you would get off your typical quilting cotton bolt, it is actually 58 to 60 inches. So just think about that when you're buying your yardage and laying out how you're going to cut. Off camera, I cut the gray fabric, but I want to show you how I cut this. So I'm using the cream fabric that's going to be on the bottom of my placemat. I'm making sure that my salvage edges are lined up nice and straight. And then I'm taking that fold and lining it up to the selvage edges so that everything's nice and parallel. I want to make sure that my fabric lays out nice and flat on my mat and then I'm going to start cutting. Because my cuts are so big and I don't have a ruler for it, I'm going to use my mat for my measurements. I don't think there's anything wrong with using your mat to measure while you're cutting. Just be consistent. If you start measuring with your rulers, I would stick with your rulers for the rest of that project, but if you're using your mat in the beginning, just stick with your mat the rest of the way. You should be fine. What I just did was get a nice straight edge on one side of the fabric and I'm using that straight edge to mark the zero inch line on my mat and then I'm measuring over 16 and a half inches and cutting all the way through. This is going to give me a 16 and a half inch by width of fabric piece of that cream fabric. Then I'm going to open it up a little bit and I'm going to fold it so that the cut edges are lined up next to each other. The reason why I do this is because my ruler is only 12 inches and I know that that is 16 and a half. And so if I fold it in half, then I can get the entire size of that folded fabric underneath my ruler. So I only have to sail through it once. It makes it easier for measuring with my mat. At this point, I am cutting 12 and a half inches off of each segment. And because there are two layers of fabric in there, every time I slice this, I'm getting two placemats. So I'm going to have a total of four when this is all done. And before we go any further with the tutorial, I want to do a couple of tests to see how this laminated cotton holds up to pressing and sewing. One of the things that makes me most nervous about this laminated cotton is what's going to happen when I iron it. And so I have a bit of scrap left over from the cream fabric, and I just want to kind of go through an iron test with you. I've cut off four different pieces, and I've used a Sharpie to label each of those fabrics, low setting, medium setting, high setting, and I have a control. This is the piece that I'm not going to do any ironing to. What I want to do is just press each of these with the different heats on my iron to see how they hold up. Let's start by applying an iron at low setting to this piece of fabric. Now I am putting the iron on the fabric side of the fabric. I know, say that 10 times fast, right? I'm not applying the fabric to the laminated side. I'm putting it on the fabric side just to see how that holds up. I'm going to let it cool nice and flat where it's at. I'm even going to bring my clapper in just to kind of absorb some of the heat from that fabric so it'll cool a little bit faster and it'll be a little bit flatter in the end. So that's cool too. So there's my low setting. Immediately, I can tell you that I still feel like there's no difference between that and the control piece. The laminated side still feels very much intact. It feels very soft, still pliable, and it doesn't feel like any of that laminated came off 
on my ironing board. Next up is the medium setting. Takes a minute for the iron to warm up to medium. There we go. Same thing, I'm just going to apply the heat to the fabric side of the laminated cotton. And then I'm gonna put my clapper on it to suck in some heat and help it lay a little bit flatter. And same thing with this one. I feel like the medium heat, the fabric did just fine. The laminated cotton didn't bleed off onto my pressing board and it still feels fully intact and pliable, but here's the real test high setting. A lot of times when you buy notions and they say they are heat resistant, you can use them on low and medium setting, but when you bring a high heat setting in, that's where you're going to have issues. So I am fully aware that I might ruin my ironing board here, but that's okay. I've got a couple of spots on it and I'm ready to recover it anyway. So if some of that laminated stuff gets onto this, no big deal. Just waiting for the iron to heat up to high. There we go. We're going to bring it in and same thing that I did before, applying the heat to the back side of the fabric. And then I'll come in with my clapper. If I was nervous about any of these, it would be the high heat setting. Let's see how it holds up. Wow, okay, so it took a high heat just fine. This doesn't feel wet. It doesn't feel like it's peeling off. It's not on my mat behind it. Everything's great. So if I wanted to, and I do, all of my placemats that are kind of wrinkly like this, I can totally give them a press. I don't know that I would want to press it from this side. That just feels like it's probably asking for trouble unless I have some sort of cheesecloth or something to put over top of this between the sole plate of my iron and the fabric. So if I'm going to press it, I'm going to press it from the back side. My placemats are kind of wrinkly and I probably should have pressed them before I cut, but this is a very forgiving project and it's not going to matter if things aren't perfectly exactly square and even. So we're going to forgive ourselves. I'm going to pull in each of my placemats and I want to get them to lay a little bit flatter. So with that high heat on the back side of my fabric, I'm just going to come in and give them a press. Now you'll notice, if you've been around my channel for a minute, you know I love me some starch. I am not applying any starch to this fabric. I think it's got enough body with that laminated stuff on the other side. All right, we're gonna finish pressing all of these rectangular cuts of fabric and I'll meet you right back here in a moment. Okay, so it's time to sew, but before we do, we need to talk about needles. Splash Fabric actually recommends that you use the Schmetz Super Non-Stick Needle to sew their laminated cotton with, and they give you a free one to put in your machine. But here's the thing. I sew on a Juki TL2010Q, and on the front side of the machine, there's actually a little sticker that says to only use needles of HAX1 or HLX5 type, and this needle, based on the picture here, I can tell you is not one of those. I probably would be okay putting this in my machine, but I'm going to test the thing that I know some of you Juki owners out there are going to ask. Do I really need to put that needle in my machine? Let's find out. I'm going to take two pieces of my control fabric, my scrap fabric that I put together, and I'm going to sew them with my laminated sides together because that's exactly what I'm going to do when I sew my placemats together. I'm going to come over to my sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch with about a 2.0 stitch length right along the side here. So it looks okay. It's sewn together. I don't see any rips. I don't see any tears. It looks like it's stitched just like it would have with normal cotton. I'm going to do one more stitch because this is the other stitch that I'm going to be doing with my placemats. I'm going to roll it over so that the wrong sides are now together. And I'm going to edge stitch right along that seam that I took. Now the needle is going to go through 
the laminated cotton before it goes through the regular fabric. And I feel like it's going through the machine just fine. So the stitching looks okay. It's got a nice quality stitch. And I think I'm going to keep the needle that's in my machine in there to finish this project. I'll say the reason why they probably recommend the Schmetz Super Nonstick is because if you're sewing with this a lot, there might be some buildup, some gunkiness that can get on your needle. And if you're using the nonstick needle, this is probably the equivalent of cooking with a Teflon pan with a nonstick coating. This is going to resist that residue buildup a little bit more. If I keep my needle in the machine, that I have, chances are I'm probably going to have to replace it sooner rather than later. And I'm perfectly okay with that because that needle has been in the machine for a while and it probably needs to be changed anyway. So I'm going to use it for the rest of this project and then I'll change it out before I get back to my piecing. So now it's time to make an actual placemat. Let's get back to the tutorial. I'm going to need two of my rectangular pieces. I need one of the fabric that's going to be on the bottom and one of the fabric that's going to be on the top. And I'm going to lay them right sides together. Now remember I said that this is a very forgiving project. So if your fabric is off just a teeny little bit, they're not perfectly cut to each other. You can see I have a little bit of an overlap here. It's gonna be okay, I promise you. I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew around all four sides with my laminated sides together. And I'm just gonna leave an opening big enough for me to put my hand through and turn it right side out. I did say at the beginning of the project that I was gonna sew with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Your seam allowance does not need to be exact. It just needs to be consistent so that you have all of your placemats coming out about the same size. So I'm just gonna find a spot on my machine where I'm going to line up. Of course, I run out of bobbin. Okay, now that I have bobbin, let's try this again. We're gonna take this to our machine and we're gonna continue stitching that quarter inch all the way around this entire project. So as I was saying before, what I'm doing is just finding a spot on my presser foot where I'm going to keep the edge of my fabric always lined up. For me, it's literally the right edge of that presser foot. I know that's going to give me a quarter of an inch. I will say when I start and ended my stitching, I did backstitch so that I don't put too much stress on the fabric and cause those stitches to pop when I turn it inside out. Once I have all of this done, then I'm gonna grab a little pair of scissors and I'm just gonna clip the corners at about a 45 degree angle, being careful to not cut through the intersection where those threads from my two seams come into play. This is just gonna reduce the amount of fabric that will rest in those corners. And as a result, I'll get a sharper point when I turn this inside out. So I'm gonna reach my hand in between the two fabrics now, I'm just gonna grab the other end and pull it through. Then I'm gonna put my hand back in there and I'm gonna trace my finger around all of those seams. Then I'm going to come in and just kind of roll the seams out, press it down with my hand. If any of the corners are a little rounded and I want them to be a little bit more sharp, I can use a point turner tool. This is one that I got from, I think it's American Vintage. Can't remember. I'll put the link to this company in the description box if you want to check out their wooden tools. They've been all over the place. So yeah, sold them for a while. I think they've given some of these to some other YouTube personalities that are much bigger than I am. You can buy them as beautiful sets. I love them. They're great. Okay, so I'm going to flatten this down with my hand, roll the seam out. And at this point, the only thing that I want to be really careful about or really picky about is just making sure that my seams are rolled out nicely. I want to make sure that I don't see the top fabric from the back or the 
back fabric from the top. And the way that I can hold that in place is by grabbing some wonder clips, working around each of those four sides and pulling them out, making sure that they're perfectly lined up and just putting a clip on there. It's actually not holding the seam together because we've already sewn it on the inside. It's just holding that folded edge together so that we get a really nice crisp finish. You don't need a lot. You just need enough to keep it flat and keep it rolled where you, right where you said it needs to be. Words are hard today, man. Once I get to the side where that gap is, I'm gonna take a little bit of time to put my fingers inside of the hole and I'm going to force that fabric to fold in on itself and I'm just going to clip that closed, making sure that those folded edges line up with each other too. And if I do this right, once the placement is finished, you shouldn't be able to tell where that gap was. So now I'm going to take it back to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch very close to this edge all the way around. This is what we call an edge stitch. I'm going to be about a 16th of an inch away from the edge, maybe even an eighth of an inch. The whole idea here is you just want to make sure you're less than a quarter of an inch because we want to make sure that we are, when we get to this hole, we're catching this folded piece that's tucked inside. We want to make sure that we're stitching that down inside. If we stitch it too far over here, away from that, then these flaps are going to come out and we don't want that. We want to keep it closed so that the flaps are inside of the bag. I said bag, I meant placemat. I'm going to keep my same 2.0 stitch length. And for me, I know when I am going to edge stitch, instead of lining up the edge of my fabric with the outer right side of my presser foot, I line it up with the inside of my presser foot. And that gives me a really nice edge stitch. I don't think you need a Teflon foot or anything special to sew this fabric with, like you might if you were working with vinyl or something. I, I think it's okay, but I can feel just a little bit of resistance. So if you do have a vinyl foot, you're probably going to be better off for that. And when you're all done, your placemat should look just like this. It is two-sided, so you can choose which side you would like to have up. Overall, I felt like splash fabric definitely was easy to work with. It held up to the heat test, it held up to my needle test, and it made some really durable placemats. I can't wait to use this fabric in a future project. Let me know in the comments down below if there's a notion or something that's in the quilting market that you have been wondering about that you would like me to try out for you. Thanks friends so much for tuning in and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye!